WISC TV now presents For the Record. An update on the Dane County chapter of the NAACP is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. The NAACP's fifth annual Freedom Fund Dinner is this coming Friday. Perfect opportunity to catch up on doings at the Dane County chapter of the nearly 110 years old civil rights organization. And we'll do that with Greg Jones, president of the NAACP Dane County branch, and Gwen Jones, chair of the 2018 Freedom Fund Committee. 110 years for the organization, not necessarily for the chapter. Right, no. right. But sometimes it probably feels that way. Indeed. There are moments. <laughs> Bring us up to date. What's going on at the NAACP? Well, Greg, do you want to start? I want to start with a banquet. Get okay. you up going on that one. Sure. All right. Well, Neil, as you know, this is our fifth banquet. Yep. We are actually five years old. We did one the very first year, and we've done one every year since. Yep. And it's really interesting to see the growth of the NAACP. I was talking with our secretary, who is the keeper of the memberships. Right. I said, Jeannie, how many members do we have when we have 350 members? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember how hard we worked to charter that branch yes. with 100 people. I do too. And it's just wonderful. And this, this year, we are doing our Freedom Fund Banquet. And it's really kind of a two-part effort. One part is to build membership. And the other part is a fundraiser yeah. because what the NAACP does, we really try not to constantly ask people for money. We fundraise once a year and those monies really do take care of our operational budget mm -hmm. because, you know, we're an all volunteer organization. Yeah. And there's no money coming from anywhere else. This is the primary source. This yeah. is the primary source. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. And so, just we'll we'll repeat this, but it's Friday at the concourse. At the concourse. Tickets are available. Yes, they're available on Facebook. They're yep. available on Eventbrite. Yep. They're available on our website. Yep. They're available from members. <laughs> they are available. Go to your website. That'll direct people to Eventbrite, and exactly. that's where they can, yes. where they can get the tickets. Absolutely. So you know, every it's 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 really a, an opportunity for reflection too, mm. once a year mm -hmm. to think back on the. Uh, on, on how the NAACP chapter is doing and celebrate that. I think it's so uh, telling that you introduce reflection as a backdrop for a, a, a Freedom Fund banquet. When you think about the Freedom Fund banquet, at least in my estimation, it's a time that we try to bring various segments of the community together under one roof to really reflect and, and speak to one issue of the day. This year, I think the theme that's been decided by the National Board and adopted by the local branch is so telling of the times that we're in and the prescription going forward. That theme, defeat hate, vote. And we can talk a bit about, about it, but let me talk about the prescription part of the theme, and that is to, the vote. That we have engaged in a huge voter turnout effort this year, a voter registration initiative, and I think the Dane County branch, in collaboration with the League of Women Voters, uh, resulting in the Voter ID Coalition and all of its engagement and activities, is a fundamental uh, prescription to not only encourage people to vote, but tell them why. So the prescription part, vote, really reflects on the theme, defeat hate. Now let me talk about that. That's a condition that the National Board and I think a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the electorate believe that we're now in a stage where we're in a hateful moment in this country's democratic purpose and legacy. And that to address that, that we want to do all we can to get people out to vote. So this year, we're saying in 2018, we want to see some real effort. Uh, we want people to get off the benches, get involved, but more importantly, we want to reach those people that we may not have been reaching in the past to not only educate about voting and voting rights, and we're not just going to sit on the sideline. It's like our national board chair said <laughs> at the national convention. We can't agonize. We must organize. So we think by bringing in the keynote speaker, Hillary Shelton, who uh, 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 we've received information on and we've seen him in, in action several years at the National Convention. He is the director of the Washington Bureau of the NAACP and also senior policy director for advocacy uh, 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 and policy. We think that he's going to bring a message to our community. So bringing us together under one roof, same time, 
focusing, deliberating, reflecting on that theme, I think we can all leave there with at least the NAACP's contribution to the momentum-building opportunity we have going forward. We should mention that the Freedom Fund banquets are held by chapters around the, around the country. Across the nation, right. in the vast majority of them hold them. The vast majority of them hold those banquets in the fall. On the West Coast, they do it in the spring, mm -hmm. but in the Midwest and the East, we do it in the fall. Yeah. And, and what's the significance of Freedom Fund? So the, the significance is kind of the legacy. It was, a, it was an opportunity to have a dinner, to raise money, to fight for freedom. Yep. That's kind of the operational legacy of that that term lingering so so many years the freedom fund sometimes it's called a freedom fund dinner sometimes a freedom fund banquet but yeah. the purpose is to raise money to uh, generate funding to uh, continue the fight for freedom and yeah. when i said that that was our operational dollars that is why yeah Gwen, you mentioned that you yeah. you, you mentioned uh, um, membership to what do you attribute this pretty significant rise in membership up to 350. Well, I really think people understand that the NAACP is the nation's oldest civil rights organization. And in Dane County, there are a lot of people who stand strongly on, you know, civil rights. They want to be a part of it. But then I always think, what about the people who don't really understand the NAACP? This gives us an opportunity to explain that. Because one question I get very often, do you have to be African American to belong to the United States? I was just going to raise that point. Yeah. Right. And right. my answer right. is absolutely not. Right. Mm -hmm. When the NAACP was founded in 1908, mm -hmm. uh, there were 60 people. Only seven of those people were African American. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I love about the Dane County branch. We are a multi-ethnic organization. We are fighting for one purpose, in that civil rights for all. And we come together under that banner. I think there's always been a non-African American on the board, even, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, oh several individuals uh, uh, on the board. And I think for me, the purpose is that it's that inclusion uh, uh, reflected in the representation of the Dane County branch that I think is, in my opinion, one of the ingredients that gives it its opportunity to be successful. Uh -huh. And I think we, uh, I personally rely on that. I'd like to spend a little more time talking about the local implications of combating the hatred that mm -hmm. we're seeing in this country. We're going to do that when we come back with Greg and Gwen Jones right after this. Okay. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. Congratulations to Marsha Michelon and Jacob Mills, the ringleaders of Wild Rumpus Circus and Mazomania. That's all we want people to try to do here at camp is just try. You might surprise yourself. I couldn't imagine doing anything else for one thing. I mean, we feel just so lucky that we get to work with kids in this way. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Sponsored by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries and by Concordia University. Days start early and they end late, sometimes with an overtime shift to make ends meet. That's the Wisconsin way. I know what it's like growing up in an immigrant family, working third shift to get through college, and 16-hour days to make ends meet, caring for my patients and raising my kids. I've helped make Wisconsin better, and I'll bring that same passion to Washington. I'm Leah Buchmeier, and I approve this message. Now at Menard, save big money in your next project with 11% off everything. Polar Plastics Multi-Purpose Plastic is perfect for covering insulation. 10 by 25 foot rolls are $5.32 after sale price and 11% off. Exceed your expectations of what makes great paint. With Pittsburgh Paramount Interior Paint, a gallon of flat is $33.80 after sale price and 11% off. Stop waiting and start saving with 11% off everything. Now at Menard's. Save big money. Need a great mattress at a great price? Shop our Factory Direct Denver mattress brands and get the same quality as high-end brands for up to 50% less. Like the groundbreaking Air Foam Aspen HD Bed in a Box mattress. An amazing value at just $399.99. Take an Aspen HD mattress home today, but hurry. Supplies are limited and they're going fast. And no matter which mattress you choose, our 365-night better sleep guarantee ensures your sleep satisfaction. No middleman markups, just great mattresses. Only at Denver Mattress. 
I am back with Gwen Jones, who is the chair of the 2018 NAACP Freedom Fund Dinner, which is coming up this Friday at the concourse. Tickets available at the website and through Eventbrite. And Greg Jones, who is the president of the Dane County chapter of the NAACP. So the theme of this um, of this year's Freedom Fund Dinner, I think, resonates with a lot of people. There's a lot of conversation going on. Here in Dane County, I think we've been seeing a little more visibility on efforts to combat the kind of hatred that we're seeing, the mm -hmm. uh, intolerance, the bigotry, the racism yes. ar ar around the country. How is that being reflected in, in the local chapter? How is that being talked well, about? Oh, on two levels. Let me first talk about uh, the relationship uh, of the law enforcement leaders of color collaboration uh, with the Dane County uh, uh, United Way and Dane County NAACP are really kind of facilitators, but who's at the table are representatives of the various municipal police departments as well as uh, community-based organizations like the Urban League, African American Council of Churches, and so forth. And fundamentally, one of the most recent recommendations on immigration was, was a reflection, in my opinion, of one of the tactics that we can use in our community to address issues of hate. So that collaboration uh, uh, endorsed and created a task force on immigration and Karen, uh, uh, my sister from uh, Central Hispano, yep, co yes. coordinated it and we were there and we talked about what's needed to produce positive responses and services to that community, our brothers and sisters in the Latina community. So that's one thing that I think was a positive reflection mm -hmm. and, and prescription going forward. I think the others... It's interesting, it's interesting you brought that up, though, Greg, because there was an incident in Dane County not too long ago with a police chief at a municipal force uh -huh. who was fired, and that whole conversation, Sheriff Dave Mahoney, who was on the United yep, Way team, called me and said, Neil, you know, you should... This team has really taken a stand yes. on this issue. Yes. And urged that this police chief be disciplined and fired. Yes. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people are familiar with the United Way oh, yeah. uh, group that, that was involved in that. And interesting you speak to that because that's one of the segments, segues to what I think was one of the responses of the community to some of the hate that's created. That particular video, video that the uh, police chief orchestrated, uh, compelled not only the law enforcement leaders of color collaboration to take a position, I think the police association in Dane County took its position, made the statements that Dane County NAACP uh, took its position, attended the hearings uh, with the village board and also uh, the police commission and made it known that those actions were, uh, were not acceptable for a civil rights organization and also we uh, asked for the deep down sentiments of the community. Those sentiments and conduct by that chief were not reflective of that community. So it was that kind of engagement and involvement where I think a lot of different entities with, a, with civil rights-minded and justice-minded individual organizations came together and said, no, let's respond. And then in addition to that, I think that was the, uh, the discourse that happened on campus having to do with the alums who were affiliated uh, with the KKK. Those kinds of things send signals to many of us who are in that baby boomer generation who understand clearly the impact of those actions of the KKK uh, in the communities some of us uh, b uh, were born and raised and lived in. So essentially it was those kinds of responses where uh, the theme uh, while reflects that, I think it's the passion of the individual organizations that responded and said, these things are not right, yeah. these things are not moral, we want to take a position against them. So you are correct. You know, there's, I'm glad you said it like that, because, you know, that's, we are looking backwards at some things right now, reflecting on things, but we are also in a position right now to look forward Make time. with the NAACP. Yeah. And one of the things that we're doing, we are now actively engaged in trying to build a youth branch because the youth council of the NAACP, it's for young people, and these are young people, yeah, especially yeah. to me, yep. 25 years old <laughs> yeah, and, and under, yep. mm. and bring them into the organization. There is an entire leadership training program that we're trying to get underway for the young people. What a great idea. Yeah. It's, it's a wonderful idea because we know that at some point we've got to hand this off and we want the next generation to really be ready to lead yeah. because we don't know what their world is going to look like, right. but we want them to be ready to face it. 
We started this with the AXO program. You've probably heard of mm -hmm. that. Yep. Our, our celebration mm -hmm. of black excellence sure. that we do every year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have our wonderful performers and artists, and we take those children to the national convention where they compete on a national scale. Yep. Right. It's great. It's very helpful. It's it wonderful. Yep. But now with the youth council, that's a different part of it. That's our leadership building. Mm -hmm. And those are two separate entities. But there's nothing saying an EXO student cannot be a part of the Youth oh, Council. Certainly. Uh -huh. certainly. And vice versa. Are they reluctant? Are 25 year olds reluctant to join an organization like the NAACP? I think for some of them, it, it's, it's kind of like, yeah. come on, you know, that's my parents' organization. Right. <laughs> well, there's another element, though. I think what I hear when I ask the young people about it, and I'm out in the community a lot, different organizations, is that. We fundamentally have that old school posture about meetings and getting things done and right. how we do things. Right. The millennials have a totally different approach saying, do you need to spend that much time? Can I do this on my do phone? Can right. we do this on? So I yeah. think some of it is, is going to require us, us uh, established organizational leadership and uh, uh, programming to really shift and change We're the way change. we do it. Yeah. And I think that's good. The thing I like about the Youth Council is they are free under the bylaws and constitution of the NAACP to structure themselves accordingly to those bylaws, but they can run their businesses any way they want and to. They so they have that ability yes. Yes, to, to have, you know, digital meetings and those kinds of things. And I think that's, that's the value of it. But it's all done under the rubric of civil rights. So that's what gives it that. Have name. you heard the speaker who's, uh, yes. who's coming? Oh, we yes. have heard him several times at oh, yes. National. Can you give us a sense of how you think he might address this issue of hatred, but also inclusion in the NAACP? Go for it. I think Hillary Shelton is without a doubt a very dynamic speaker, and because he has such a depth and breadth in advocacy mm -hmm. and his legislative experience, his background, he is going to give Dane County something to seriously think about. It's very easy just to sit back and say, okay, you go, you go vote and I'm not sure if I want to vote right now. I think it's very clear based on our last election that not enough people actually got up mm. and did their civ you know, civic duty and went and vote. Right. But it's about not just you voting. Take someone with you. You know, everybody vote. It's your right. Exercise your rights. And with um, Hillary, I think it's going to be very interesting. That's a great message. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about the NAACP Dane County today. Yep. We're going to do that right after this. Okay. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or having to make the tough choice between eating or heating. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision. Many are veterans or the elderly and disabled. Some just young working families struggling to meet their survival needs. Don't be left out in the cold alone. For a hand up, call Energy Services today at 1-800-506-5596. As superintendent, Tony Evers failed to remove abusive teachers from our schools. Now, Evers wants to cut Wisconsin's prison population in half. A dangerous plan that today would mean releasing thousands of violent criminals back into our communities. Which could include felons who've committed rape, assault, robbery, and even kidnapping. First, abusive teachers. Now releasing violent criminals putting everyone at risk. We just can't trust Tony Evers to keep us safe. This is an exciting time in the energy industry. The world is changing, and we want to work toward common goals. Toward a cleaner energy future, driven by innovation, powered by working together. By working with customers, we provide customers what they want. MGE e is your community energy company for the future. Powering our community, sharing your values, partnering to meet your needs. Visit energy2030together.com to create a more sustainable future together. For well 
over a decade, WISC TV3 and Channel 3000 have paid tribute to top-notch teachers nominated by our viewers. Every month, we spotlight and salute an area teacher, and we want to hear about your favorite. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Top-notch teachers sponsored by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries and by Concordia University. It was a long, long road, but I'm here. It's like I have key leaders around me, and that kept me going. Her outlook on life is just inspirational. The key is to not give up. Give moments that matter at this year's Geo's Garden Gala. I'm back with Gwen Jones and Greg Jones from the Dane County chapter of the NAACP. We were talking about goings-on at the organization, but also the uh, fifth annual Freedom Fund dinner coming up this Friday at the concourse. Um, one of the, th I was looking at the website and the number of committees mm -hmm. that this chapter has is significant. Yeah. But, the, you know, the types of committees I thought was pretty interesting, and it's a pretty diverse you know, um, um, set of interests that the organization has. I agree. I think in the initial design of the organization, uh, the discussion and decisions to create a committee structure, and this is our interpreted, that the committees are the engine of the organization. Uh, the local organizations will move as the local committee's engagement uh, go. But I also carry out that by saying that the members of the committee, being volunteers, are really driven by their passion mm -hmm. and commitment to the civil rights issues that are mm -hmm. core to the committee that they work on, whether it's political action, education, criminal justice, yep. and so forth. And let's, let me do a bounce back just for one example. Uh, the discussion by our criminal justice committee that included the recent sentence in the Alec Cook uh, situation yes. was deeply involved in the justice in that decision, the caveats surrounding it, the process in terms of the defense and the prosecutors and the judge reaching that decision. And ultimately, it led us to issue a statement by the branch saying, we think there's some injustices here. Now, we're not saying uh, that we don't totally agree. We're saying that when you look at similar kinds of sentences for similar times of commitments of crime, we think that there is a racial disparity component that aggravates the numbers of individuals who, uh, from the point of sentence into, uh, uh, into incarceration. Yep. So with that kind of analysis they go through, and they bring those things up and out, and we have to kind of uh, look at them as an executive committee and then as a branch. But that was one where it was clearly uh, enough uh, community outpour to say this needs to be at least stated in the context of the purpose of the of civil of civil rights and the and the uh, the local branch. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is part of the of the annual dinner, but um, have you thought about moving forward? Mm -hmm. Where how is the how is the organization poised right now, looking ahead to 2019 and 2020? Okay. I think on, on two levels, uh, what I talk about in terms of the committee structure is, number one, we have to keep the committees currently engaged in their respective areas, be flexible enough so that uh, when issues arise, we can get engaged in those. But I think what we got to do more than anything else, we have to in increase our collaborative capacity. That means networking with organizations, and I mentioned one or two, the uh, United Way in terms of our relationships, the League of Women Voters, our relationship, but there are other organizations uh, uh, that are African American in nature, and we, we relate to those. But the needs of the community are changing so fast. Yes. That means that our collaborative effort needs to be much more uh, increased and enhanced. So I'm really always thinking about how do we continue to collaborate uh, at our local level to be a part of the solution. So that's kind of the structural approach. The pragmatic and, and, and practical uh, piece for me going forward is going to be how do we build that relationship with those uh, 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 millennials uh, so that they now are not just aware of the historical uh, uh, and legacy issues relating to the NAACP, but those things going forward. And I think it's interesting with, with the election being sort of a focus for mm -hmm. the Freedom Dinner to get
get out and vote. Yes. Um, which I think there's a lot of energy around turnout right now yes, among, all, among all communities, but I think communities of color in particular seem yeah, really energized. Up. And then we quickly go into another election where for the first time we're going to have at least two African Americans running for mayor. Running for mayor. Yes. So, but let me just quickly do this segue and then uh, I'll give it to you. One of the things that I think is really critical is some of the relationships we have, like the local branch has a relationship with the Wisconsin Council of Churches. The Wisconsin Council of Churches and the state conference of the NAACP under Frank Humphrey's leadership are right now in, ex in an exploratory situation asking the question, can we develop an effective candidates forum between now and November 6th. So yes. we're working with those campaigns to bring them together. That would be a fundamentally tweak, different tweak in terms of voter education, voter information, and voter outreach in Dane County. Yep. That could be big. Yep. And that's the one I was going to mention. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We've been I, together too long. I, I got a call from my friend John Odom the other day who was talking, yes. about, uh, yes. talking about this effort to find all the candidates and get them to participate. You know, exactly. It's so critical for the voting public to know what these candidates stand for. And these candidates need to come into the community exactly. to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Because people blindly voting for someone and they don't know the issues or they don't know the issues fully and what type of impact it could have on them, their family, people they love, yeah. those days are over. And candidates haven't been as willing to do that as they have been in the past. We right. need to pressure You're them right. to, yes. to do it. Totally agree. And if they want You're our totally votes, right. yeah. then they have to come and tell us what they stand for. And to me, that's just critical. Okay. This coming Friday at the concourse, yes. Yes. go online, go to NAACP website. Yep. Yes. Tickets are available. Yes. Through Eventbrite. I and like it. NAACP <coughs> of Dane Co. <laughs> have a great dinner. Have a great year. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank right. you very much. We're going to wrap up for the record right after this. the power of Tempur-Pedic sleep at Denver Mattress. And right now, get a gift card for up to $300, along with our 365-night better sleep guarantee and free delivery. Denver Mattress is your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. The all-new 2019 Subaru Ascents are here at Don Miller. This is the biggest Subaru ever and available with your Don Miller deal. The Ascent, a bigger, better family SUV. It has room for up to eight passengers with standard third-row seating. The Ascent is loaded with safety features like Subaru's standard eyesight collision avoidance system, symmetrical all-wheel drive, and so much more. Don Miller Subaru, West on Odana, or the brand-new expanded east side store on High Crossing Boulevard, Madison. Don Miller. It's a new day and a new beginning for those who are moving freely and without pain. Thanks to the joint replacement team at SSM Health, orthopedic surgeons and specialists who take the time to get to know you and will help get you back to doing what you love most. SSM Health, for everything that moves you. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. Come discover the power of Tempur-Pedic sleep at Denver Mattress. And right now, get a gift card for up to $300, along with our 365-night better sleep guarantee and free delivery. Denver Mattress is your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. My thanks to Gwen Jones and Greg Jones and you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record. I could go on and 